What is up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Will Flips. Uh, in today's video, we're talking about something that I have wanted to talk about for a hot minute now, but I wanted to put the time into it. I wanted to get my thoughts straight because, you know, I was very excited to get it, and, uh, well, that excitement hasn't worn off, and that is because this is the MachineWise Serif. Now, the Serif is a knife that has been coming for a while now. Uh, if you've been following MachineWise at all, you would be aware of this. Uh, the, the Serif is his top-of-the-line balisong that he's been working on, um, taking design inspiration from the Squid Industries Tsunami with its uh, sandwich, chanwich style handles um, with this intricate texturing and a really, really pretty design overall. Uh, this thing is just freaking awesome, and I, I've got to say, I'm really impressed. Uh, so some of the things that make the Serif extra special are uh, essentially everything about it. <laughs> so it's running on really high-grade titanium, so you've got this beautiful pattern that's cut into this titanium that just looks utterly gorgeous. And then there's a bunch of intricate milling happening on the inside, and then of course you get to the blade. The blade has this wonderful sort of recurve bowie uh, with this really, really lovely thin profile. It's a very thin blade, but honestly I think it suits the look of the knife itself very well. It almost reminds me of like a stiletto blade, uh, and I honestly really, really like it. It's nice and sharp and will cut through most things, which is very good. Um, and yeah, so it's just it's just good. Uh, it has S35VN written on the back because that's what the blade steel is, but mine is very special. You might be able to see that right there is my logo. So uh, Dalen at MachineWise actually did this and didn't tell me that he was going to be doing this. He just told me something special was happening. So my logo is actually etched into this one. And then on the other side, it says willhirsch.gay very lightly uh, in there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's right there. And that, well, that's just super cool. That is really nice. Uh, MachineWise is a longtime viewer of the Will Hirsch channel, um, which is really cool. And our story together is pretty awesome. Uh, he was telling me that essentially he got inspired to make Bala songs partially from watching uh, my, I think, 2019 collection video. Maybe it was the 2018 collection video. I think that's what it was. Uh, mm. No, no, it was the 2019 one, yeah. He, he watched the 2019 collection video, and then over the year of 2020 got into making Bala songs after watching that video, and now uh, has multiple Bala songs in my collection, so it's pretty cool. You know, I mentioned in the, uh, in the Delta 5T review that it's cool that someone could go just in one year from, you know, having Bala songs that are really cool to having Bala songs in my collection, so... You know, that's that's pretty freaking awesome. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the situation that happened there, and I am just really, really impressed with uh, what MachineWise has done here. Um, it's been really, really cool to watch, because if any of you remember the Delta 5T, it was the first thing he ever designed, and it really was weird. You know, it wasn't bad by any means. In fact, it's actually shockingly good, but it's not what you'd traditionally consider a good balisong to be. And that was one of the problems with it, right? Is that it was just this massive balisong with these big honking handles. It was huge. It had a lot going on. And, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not a good thing either. And so that was something that was a big deal uh, for him in the future, is that from that point he started designing balisongs that were, you know, closer to what someone might traditionally describe as a good balisong. And uh, I think that is very, very awesome. And this really is the peak of his designs, in my opinion. So, you know, comparatively to the Tsunami, I think this does a number of things right that the Tsunami tried and definitely pushed some new territory with, but I think this is kind of a perfection of some of those initial ideas. Um, it is incredible tolerances and sound. I mean, listen to this thing. Like, you can just hear in how it sounds how good the tolerances are, right? It's incredible. Um, you know, the so the tolerances are incredible. The machining is extremely good. This texture on the faces is just perfect. I think it's exactly what a balisong like this needs. It's got this 
just enough grip to really flip in any scenario. And I haven't dropped this, you know, because of a loss of grip yet. Like I've, I've been flipping it a ton and I haven't dropped it because of a lack of grip. I've only dropped it because of doing a trick that was too intense for me and I messed up and dropped it. Um, and so, yeah, the, the grip on it's perfect. The balance is awesome because it has an adjustable balance system. So in the handles down here at the very end, there are brass weights inside of there. And he includes two sets of brass weights. And then you can also remove the brass weights entirely to give a extra neutral balance. So the ones that it comes included with are the neutral balance. And they're essentially this like triangular shaped brass weight that then has the inside of it milled out. So it weighs less than a full solid brass weight. Then he gives you a pair of full solid brass weights. So you can go heavier from where you start if you want. And then you can also go lighter. You can take out the weights entirely and get a really light flipping experience. And all three of them feel very good. I experimented with all of them. Uh, that's one thing that I like about this that I think is better than the Tsunami. You'll notice, obviously, there's no cool uh, anodized hardware on this compared to the Tsunami. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, the Tsunami is very stylistically cool, but the hardware being made of titanium means that it's really hard to tune or take apart the Tsunami without damaging that hardware, because the bits that you're using are hardened steel bits, and they will destroy the anodization on those uh, pieces of hardware. Whereas with this, the you know, it, it's just steel. It's steel in there, and so you can use your hardened steel bits and tighten this thing or loosen this thing or open it up and take it apart and put it back together without any worry of destroying your pivot and making them look worse. I've taken this apart multiple times and my pivots almost look factory new, so that's a very, very good feature in my opinion. I like the option to have stainless steel instead of titanium. I'm just really not a fan of titanium pivots. Uh, on top of that, just the whole thing with the weights is much easier than the Tsunami. The Tsunami has a very interesting system with three pins in a triangular configuration inside of the back of the handle. And those three pins do a very good job of changing the weight. Currently in my Tsunami, I have two of the weight pins in instead of all three. Um, originally I had one, then I moved to two. I think three would probably be a little bit too much, but it does affect the balance a substantial amount. However, the tolerances of the Tsunami are so, so, so precise that putting it back together after putting those pins in can be a pain in the butt, let me tell you. Uh, for me, obviously, it's an extra large problem because my Tsunami is not like regular Tsunamis. My Tsunami is a conglomeration of a bunch of different parts all slapped together. It's not, it was never supposed to be made you know, so like my tsunami, I give it a pass, but I've heard from plenty of other people who own production tsunamis that it is relatively difficult to change out those pieces. And I've had people uh, who have said that at least their earlier production tsunamis, when they tried to change out the weight system, they couldn't put the knife back together easily. Um, and that's a problem because that means that, you know, the, the tolerances are so very sensitive that you can't reconstruct your own knife after taking it apart and changing something and something that was designed for the end user to change, you know. And I, I will admit also, I think that's kind of funny, the idea of utilizing uh, titanium pivots in something that is supposed to be user, servitable, user serviceable in the end. Because if you don't know what you're doing and you just go ham on your pivots without using like a microfiber cloth in between your uh, your screwdriver and the pivot, as I said before, you'll destroy the titanium pivots. So, you know, you do need to have some knowledge as to what you're doing before you even try to take apart and service your Tsunami. Whereas with this, it's much more akin to a standard Balasong servicing experience that you might already be used to. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons I really love it. Uh, for me, I have the heaviest weights installed. I really do like a little bit of a handle bias, and I think that that did an amazing job in this ballast song. Now, uh, Brandon, on the other hand, prefers it with less of a handle bias, so uh, he liked it with the original neutral weights. He didn't get to try it without the weights, but I have a feeling his favorite version of this knife would end up being it without the weights entirely. I think he would really like this with no weights at all. And uh, I can't blame him. It's a really, really good, really, really good knife. So yeah, uh, to be quite frank, this is absolutely my favorite Balasong on the market right now. I think for the price, which is $100 less than the Squid Industries Tsunami, while giving performance that I would say is above the Squid Industries Tsunami, 
this thing is unbeatable. This is the best bargain on the market for a balisong. This is the highest quality balisong on the market. Like, genuinely speaking, from the heart, I am unbelievably impressed with what MachineWise has accomplished here, and I wish him oh so very much luck in the future. And I'm not saying this because he sent me one of these for free. I paid for this thing. This is my serif, baby. This is, this is my money that I invested into this, and I am so happy I did because it was genuinely worth it every single moment, every single step of the way. <laughs> Um, something else that's kind of cool here, you'll notice this incredible anodization job he did. I asked for a mystery anno, you know, I just, I wanted whatever, whatever he wanted to do. And he said that he was cooking up something cool. And what he ended up doing was blackening the titanium. Um, I think he did it first. I, I'm not entirely sure which one he did first. I don't know if he blackened it first or if he anodized it blue first and then polished and blackened that. But either way, he blackened it and then added this blue, and so you get this weird, like, purple sort of iridescence on the sides where it's been blackened, but then in all the holes it's got this bright neon sort of blue. I don't know, it looks incredible. Um, genuinely just a fascinating knife to look at. It really does remind me... Ooh, I almost got my hand a little bit there. <laughs> um, it really does genuinely remind me of, like, the look of a Monarch Butterflies... No, not a Monarch, a Morpho. Uh, a Morpho Butterfly's scales, similar to how the uh, Benchmade 51 is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you that look of a Morpho Butterfly, and uh, this thing just absolutely has that sort of iridescent sheen to it that I find enthralling. I'm using all the big words today. I hope you, I hope you like that. I'm going out of my way for that. Um... Another thing that's really cool about this is the jimping. The jimping is just perfect, in my opinion. Uh, it's got it cut into the backside and these nice deep grooves, and then the same thing on these two little face sides, which makes ladders just easy as pie to pull off. You can see I've been pulling off um, sideways ladders pretty continuously on this thing, and I just genuinely really enjoy it in terms of, like, using it everything I try to pull on it is incredible. I, I told MachineWise uh, when I got this out of the box and I played with it for a bit, I was angry. I was like, oh my god, you can't just do this. You can't just make the best ballast song on the market and then send it to me, like, casually. Like, you're not allowed to do that. That is, that's stupid. You can't do that. This is the best thing I've ever touched. You know, that's, that's mean. <laughs> um, and yeah, genuinely, this is the best ballast song I have ever used. Uh, it is just utterly incredible. Um, I, I told him that, you know, the last time I felt this way, in terms of, like, picking up a ballast song for the first time and being like, oh my god, this is insane, uh, the only other time I've really felt that way was specifically with the uh, Monarch back in the day. If you remember my video from forever ago where I said the Monarch was my favorite ballast song, and it was at the time genuinely my favorite ballast song. I picked it up at Blade Show and I was super impressed with it, and you know, that's that's why I made that video and that's why it was. But over time I've, you know, played with a lot more ballast songs and I've had a lot more experience, and so I'm a lot less easily impressed now, I think. Like, if I tried the Monarch now, having no everything I know now, I probably wouldn't have been nearly as instantly impressed with it. Um, I still like my Monarch a lot, if I ever will get it back from Julian. He's working on it. He's, he's trying to fix the handle gap issue. We're still working on that. But... Um, nothing has impressed me as much as this has, especially this late in the game, especially when I know as much about ballast songs as I do now. This thing just is mind-blowing to me. Oh, I poked the camera with it. I hope that didn't hurt the lens. I think it's fine, though. The lens didn't fall off this time. If you're, if you're a long-time viewer of this channel, you'll know that every once in a while I'll hit the wide-angle lens off of my camera, and that's, that's always a fun time. Everybody enjoys that. <laughs> Uh, one thing about this guy, too, the tip is brutal. It's not super sharp, you know, it's not like a, like Jerry Holmes knives kind of have a needle point um, going on there. So it's not quite a needle point, but it's, it's pretty sharp. It'll get you if you're not careful. Um, but yeah, I really, really genuinely love this thing, and I'm very happy, uh, oh no, to have it. Um, and I hope that you guys... Uh, are interested in getting one as well, because if he opens up... Well, no, that's the thing. That's right, you don't even have to wait for him to open up books. He's producing them as quickly as he can, which isn't super fast, mind you, but he is doing it. And you can sign up to get one right now on his website. You can go to his website, get on the waiting list for one of these, and the way that the waiting list works is that it randomly selects your name 
and if you get your name selected, he'll make you a knife. And, you know, I think it's the most fair version of the system because everybody has the same potential to get one. Um, you know, you could be waiting months, you could be waiting days, you never know how long it might take, but because it's random, it's much more fair. Anybody could get it, and anybody might get one at any time, and there's not, like, a huge waiting list where if you weren't the first person there, then you aren't going to get one for years, you know what I mean? So, um, at least you got that. And on top of that, I know he's working on producing as many of these as possible and working on expanding uh, machine-wise as a whole. Um, he said in a recent Instagram post that this year, hopefully, would be the last year that machine-wise is a single-person operation, and that... That's really cool. Um, the idea that he would be able to this quickly already begin hiring people to help him is really, really sweet. So yeah, it'll be cool. I'm very, very hopeful for Machine Wise because it'd be really cool to have more really cool makers like him on the Balasong market making incredible stuff. So <laughs> I am, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I, I know this was a bit of a long, rambly one, but I just really wanted to express how much I like this thing, how impressed I am with it. I mean, just listen to it, you know? <laughs> I've never heard a Bala song that just sounded like that, you know? That just, like, it was so obvious from the beginning that this has incredibly tight tolerances. And that's awesome. Um, but yeah, it looks amazing. It, it's, it sounds amazing. It's really durable. Uh, this Chanwich design is very good. It's not quite as perfect as the Tsunami in terms of like, if you hold it up to the light, you can see light coming in from between, you know, this spacing here. Whereas on the Tsunami, it's so perfectly manufactured that there's no light that comes through there. But I don't think that's a big issue. And if anything, actually, it makes it easier to assemble and reassemble, sorry, disassemble and then reassemble assemble this balasong. As I said, with the Tsunami, the tolerances are so, so tight that if you take it apart after you bought it, you might not be able to get it back together because the tolerances are that tight. Whereas this one, I really didn't have any trouble taking it apart or getting it back together. And I'm very happy about that. Uh, one thing to note with this thing, and the only thing that I would think is a downside, is that the handles are very, very square. Um, you can see that it is just a hard edge on the side here. It really is just a swing. Um, kind of hard edge. And so, yeah, these handles are extremely square. And while they are tapered in all directions, so they get thicker in Z-depth here than they are there, and then they're thicker you know, back here than they are here in this direction. So they are tapered in all directions. But um, even with that, you know, it, it still fans incredibly well. You, like you can see right now I'm doing all these amazing fans, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most comfortable thing in the world. I think it, it feels great for chaplains. I really do like the way this thing chaplains, but sometimes when I'm rolling it around in my fingers, I'll just kind of notice the feeling of those corners against my hand. And it's not the best thing in the world. It's not bad um, at all. <laughs> As I said, this is genuinely the best ballast song I've ever flipped. But I still think there's room for improvement. And you know what? That's pretty exciting because I'm certain that Dalen will improve this design and will release things that potentially beat this in the future. And that's really, really exciting. So yeah, uh, this thing just excites me a lot. And, you know, I think says a lot about the future of the Balasong hobby. Seeing uh, more impressive designs come out for potentially less money is always awesome. Um, and yeah, I just... I am really enthralled with this thing. So I got to say, Dalen, incredible job. Very, very, very beautiful knife. I am just utterly blown away with how much I like this thing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and my extensive ramblings about this wonderful Balasong. But until next time, I'll see y'all later. Peace.